Hello and welcome to another video by JT12's RC Videos. My name is, as usual, Josh, and welcome to this tutorial on starting a Nitro engine that maybe hasn't been used for several months or maybe even longer. This same tutorial and many of the steps that it could also be applied to an engine that you're struggling to get started. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using HPI Pulse 4.6, which has a 28 sized engine. However, these procedures apply to any Nitro engine size, and many of the steps applied you can apply to any RC engine, whether it being in a boat, in a plane, or in a car. So, let's get down to business and let's start this tutorial. So, here we have it the HPI Pulse 4.6. This engine hasn't been started now for several months and it's been stored in a cold shed environment unfortunately with no afteron oil inside the engine. So this makes a good demonstration vehicle to show you guys how I'm going to approach starting this engine that just doesn't want to start using normal starting procedures. So the basic tools you're going to need in order to start the engine are just the usual ones. Obviously you're going to need some fresh nitro fuel. Now this is the first point I need to make if this fuel has been sitting in here since the last time you used the car then it's very important you pour this away. Nitro fuel does go bad and even if it visually looks okay I would advise using fresh fuel. That goes for what's in the tank as well so if you do have some old fuel in there then what I would advise is simply pouring it away somewhere safe and responsible. If it has turned to jelly in there then you will need to remove the fuel tank and rinse it out with hot water making sure you remove all the water obviously before you refill it with some fresh fuel you're going to need a glow igniter now this is another important thing there's no point trying to start the engine if actually you're trying to use a flat glow igniter make sure your igniter is working test it on a few spare glow plugs first just to make sure that actually it's not your glow plug gone but maybe the igniter's naff so give this an overnight charge in my case I'm actually using a separate LiPo battery igniter these work very well and these provide a lot more power to the glow plug than your usual rechargeable igniters but yeah make sure you're actually using a freshly charged igniter give it an overnight charge and make sure that that's working properly before you try and use it to start your engine so the first thing I'm going to do is just have a visual inspection of the car now for me personally I like to make sure I put all my vehicles away with no problems. The main reason for that is, especially if you're going to be storing it for a few months, you may forget what the issues are and then you'll get it out and be disappointed when something's not working. If it's an electronic issue as well and you drive it with the electronic issue because you've forgotten it had one, maybe it could run away causing damage to the car, to people or to someone's property. So firstly I'm just going to make sure that the key components are working. So I've turned on the, the radio system there, and I've turned on the receiver. I've installed fresh batteries okay, into both of those things. Very important, if there's old batteries in there, make sure you pop in fresh ones. Don't just carry on where you left off months ago. So after putting in fresh batteries, I'm just going to accelerate, pull the trigger, observe the carburetor is opening, and then pop on the brakes and make sure that you have decent braking as well this is very important that you have brakes before you run the engine after all this time I'm also at this stage just going to check the carburetor opening gap is set to one millimeter then I'm going to take a look at the steering I'm going to turn left make sure left is left and I'm going to turn right make sure right is right and obviously adjust the reverse switches and the trims on the transmitter as appropriate so once those things are done, I'm going to remove the glow plug and I'm going to have a look and see what kind of condition the glow plug is in. So I'm going to take my four-way wrench and I'm going to remove the glow plug. Here it is. I'm just going to have a visual inspection of the glow plug. It shouldn't be rusty. To be honest with you, just on the safe side, I would advise for easy starting to actually just replace the glow plug. So I'm going to take my glow igniter, I'm going to apply some pressure onto it and I'm going to see what it glows up like. Now for me, I'm not satisfied because that is not glowing a very bright orange. So in this case I would advise replacing the glow plug. OK, 
Okay, so why the glow plug is out and removed, this is something now begins to come into the special procedures to get this started after a long time. Now, usually to prime the engine, you would put your finger over the exhaust pipe and pull the pull starter. This forces fuel from the fuel tank into the engine. What I'm going to do is just to give this a little helping hand, just to get it started for this time, so I'm going to take my filler bottle and while the glow plug is out, I'm just going to pop into the top of the engine just a few drops of nitro fuel, okay? Just like that, just a little bit. Now we know there's some fuel directly below the glow plug, giving us a much bigger chance of getting this thing started. So once that's done, I'm going to replace the glow plug back into the engine. And there we go. Now when you come to prime the engine at the moment, you need to bear in mind that there's already some fuel in there, therefore it will be very easily flooded. So next thing I'm going to do is just remove the air filter. I'm just going to observe inside there to see what the opening gap is. And I can see at the moment it's actually completely closed. So I'm going to adjust it accordingly. Just going to slightly turn up my throttle trim just to give us a little bit of opening gap. And then I'm just going to replace the air filter. At this stage, when the air filter is removed, you could optionally put a little bit of fuel into the carburetor as well. However, usually I find that priming the engine, putting fuel in there, and putting fuel in there is a little bit too much. So I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do now is simply put some fresh fuel into the vehicle. All you need to do is just get some fuel through the pipes. If you don't do this, what will happen is when you start the engine, it will just burn off that little bit of fuel that, if, that you just poured into there, and then the engine will cut. So I'm just going to pull the starter, and now the engine is primed. If you're struggling to prime the engine using the, that method there, just remove the tube. And get the fuel in that way. Okay, so now I think we are ready to start the engine. Just to summarise the things we have gone through in preparing this engine and trying to get it started for the first time in a long time. So what I've done is I have replaced the, receiver, the transmitter and the receiver batteries with new ones. I've emptied out the fuel tank and replaced it with some fresh bought nitro fuel to give us the best chances of getting it going. If there is old fuel in the tank or it has turned to jelly substance, I would advise you removing the fuel tank and rinsing it out with some warm water, getting all that old fuel out and then of course making sure it's dry before you replace the tank with fresh fuel. Next thing I've done, after having a visual inspection of the car to make sure everything's working and ready to go, I've removed the air filter and checked the idle speed gap to make sure that the gap in the carburetor is not open too much and it's open enough to get the engine going for the very first time. The gap for that should be anywhere between 1 and 2 millimeters, depends and varies slightly on which car you have. I've then removed the glow plug and I've tested the glow plug using a fresh charged glow plug igniter. There's no point using a flat or an old igniter which isn't very helpful. It, it, it won't give you the best chance of getting your engine going after such a long time. Whilst the glow plug was removed I've taken my filler bottle and I've put in a few drops of nitro fuel directly on top of the piston. This is going to do a few things, it's going to lubricate the engine and it's going to give the engine more fuel to get going with after this while. And then once I've done that I've replaced the working glow plug and I've primed the engine the usual way, forced some fuel round into the carburetor. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull the pull start now a few times just before I start it. Just to get that fuel round the engine, get it onto the glow plug, get it lubricated around the engine and ready to start. Now one thing I haven't touched is the tuning settings. I've gone with the assumption that when we put this car away these settings were enough, were good enough to allow fuel into the engine. If the tuning settings are of course completely messed up and it's running very lean to the stage where it's not letting fuel through, 
possibly you will need to reset your tuning settings to their base settings. Those can be found usually in the instruction manual or a quick search on Google will find some settings there for you. But Nitro engines are actually very, very simple. Providing you have heat on the glow plug and there's fuel in there and fuel going in, the engine will start. If it has air and fuel and heat from the glow plug, the engine will ignite. So if you are having issues with it, then just double check your glow plug, double check your idle speed screw, make sure that there's enough air getting in to allow the engine to start. And of course, check the fuel is getting in, make sure you're using fresh fuel. If all those things are done, then your engine will start. So this engine is very cold. Today it is about 10 degrees outside. And I'm going to attempt to start the engine now. Bearing in mind half an hour ago I couldn't start the engine, just using the normal method, it just wouldn't start. Since then I've performed a few checks, I've replaced the plug, I've put some fuel directly in and I've lubricated the engine and now I'm going to give it a go. Hopefully this tutorial has been helpful to you.